Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade game video for you. This is going to be a repair video and this is the very first part of it we thought we'd film. We've had this pinball machine for a long time in storage. We bought this off of a gentleman years ago with about 15 other games. And this one was basically assumed to be a parts game because it's just been completely gutted. <laughs> We're looking basically at an empty cabinet. And it wasn't even in that great a shape as an empty cabinet. But uh, we got a few parts together and we decided, you know what, we're actually going to save this thing. So we figured we'd film a little video to show you what we're starting with. Now, we've actually cleaned it up a little bit already. Um, so it looks rough, but it was even more rough before we started working on it. These are the during shots, not the before shots. <laughs> this is a Bally... Uh, Lost World from 1978, I believe, maybe 1979. It's a really fun game. Uh, whenever we got it, the uh, it did have a playfield, but the playfield is just completely trashed. Basically, the story with this game is somebody left it outside in the rain, literally. So the cabinet is fairly solid, but uh, the playfield actually had rain on it. So it warped and rusted um, and just had a lot of problems. So we, uh, what we've been waiting for is to find another play field, and we were actually able to find another play field. So we're going to do a complete play field swap on this, which isn't really all that fun and takes a lot of time. Um, and it didn't have a back glass, but we were able to find a back glass as well. So if you've got the back glass and you've got the play field, and you've got the cabinet, you've got a game, all the other stuff's just uh, just needs to be pieced back together. But basically we're starting from scratch, so just to, we'll run down a little bit of what needs to be done. The cabinet still needs to be cleaned up. We probably won't repaint much of it because it, the stenciling's still pretty good on it. And it's pretty solid. Um, the coin door needs cleaned. The shooter rod is missing. Um, the play field's missing. <laughs> We'll get to that in a minute. Um, everything in here is decent, though. It just needs work. You can see on something like this. See this solenoid? That's the knocker. See the rust on it? That's basically the shape that the entire play field was in. Um, so this... Well, it was seized, but now it's starting to work. Um, but, uh, basically, everything on the play field was like that. So all of that needs to be reworked and replaced. And blah 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 the harness the little bit of the harness that's left has been partially hacked so you can see they've got a ground wire um, running from here that runs up to the uh, coin door and they've soldered that in to another wire and so there's some little stuff like that going on um, the back glass is missing of course but we were able to find one that's the light panel. It's actually in decent shape. All of the connections for the uh, displays are still there. If you look at the back of the light panel, all of the uh, light bulb sockets appear to be in decent shape. These ballet sockets had issues anyways, but all of these look pretty good. The ones that were on the old play field are all just rusted and destroyed, so I'm going to have to... We're going to use basically the harness off the old play field and uh, uh, We'll have to put all new sockets and things on our rubber replacement play field. But, lucky for us, the wiring on the light panel isn't hacked. Everything looks complete. All the connectors are still there. Now on these connectors, a lot of times you have to repin them, replace the pins depending on the condition that they're in, where it, the displays slide in the front and this slides down on the back of it. Um, but all that looks good. So over here, this is where the light board resides. So these two connectors here look fine. Again, they may need to be repinned, but they're there. And then here's the two connectors for the uh, power, the uh, MPU board, and they look fine, but will probably need to be repinned. Um, the harness continues around the top, runs over here to this where the solenoid board resides, and one of the connectors is fine. Again, may need to be repinned, but this one they've completely cut off. Why would you do that? Mm. Why would they do that to me? So we'll have to 
repin that and put another connector on and then you've got the problem where it may be too short to actually fit where it goes hopefully it'll make it <laughs> and then this crap down here look at this they've got this is the um, this runs to the soundboard that goes right here now the deal with the boards being missing these are all exactly the same in all of the Bally machines the soundboards a little different but it's not a big deal they we've got some of those um, so the MPU board, we've got those. The light board, we've got those. The solenoid board, we've got those. And they're not that expensive to us. Uh, the sound board, we've got that. So all this is fine. The power supply that goes here is missing. They've got it hacked up, or I believe it's a hack. I mean, I haven't seen it like this, but um, they've got this plug here. I've never seen that in a Bally machine. That's off of an EM. So somebody's added that unless unless it was like that in uh, Lost World. I've never seen a Lost World like that. And then they added this large power connector here, which is actually supposed to go on the uh, power board right here, but that's not the right connector. So I don't know what they did there either. Um, maybe the power board they had, had a they had hacked and put this connector on so they could plug it in, but that's not what you usually see in a valley. So I don't, I believe that was all added later. So all of this needs to go. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take this out, put a new connector on that properly fits on the power supply. Once we get that in there, um, again, that goes there. There's also some other connectors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about eight connectors. Um, well, I guess some of those would be on this harness. Yeah. So this, if I can get it. Yeah. So this is more of the cabinet. So basically this will go up here on the uh, solenoid board. This is one of the connections maybe to the cabinet switches or whatever. I don't know. We'll get it all straightened out and figure out where it all goes. But uh, these, these three connectors here actually look pretty decent and although that one's burnt so that connector will need to be replaced and repinned so you know we're starting from scratch on this one basically um, a, a game like this to be honest isn't really even worth doing, going through all that trouble but we, we really like working on them and uh, since we already own the cabinet even though we bought it as a parts game there's really no value in it as a part nobody's going to pay anything for the cabinet and uh, there's really no uh, basically either we can trash it basically throw it in the trash or we can put in a little bit of work and spend a little bit of money and make it a freaking pinball machine again so guess what we're making it a freaking pinball machine again what do you think about that so uh there's the cabinet that's what we're starting with and uh, i'm going to show you the play field that we picked up so you can check that out be back in just a minute all right, folks, so here is our play field. We picked this up off of a gentleman who back in the day uh, worked for an operator that actually did play field swaps. So this was in a, of course, used in a machine. And then uh, they, back in the day, you could actually go order new play field, silk screen play fields um, as a part from the operator. So he, his operator would basically order replacement play fields and swap them out every once in a while, which is craziness because there's so much work involved, but that's the story that he told us. Um, and again, I've got a parts play field that's destroyed. I mean, horrible shape, the one that was originally in this machine and was left out in the rain. But it's got all of the little pieces. It's got all the little posts. It's got all the little brackets and assemblies and everything. And most importantly, it has the wiring harness, which is... Uh, probably the hardest part to remake. You can buy almost every part that you need for this play field uh, to completely populate it from what you see here, but uh, the uh, you can't really get the wiring harness. You'd have to make that from scratch, and that would be quite an undertaking, so we're, we're happy to have that original harness to help us along, but this is what we're starting with. It's not in perfect shape. We got this pretty inexpensively. Um, as you can see, there's some wear here and there. We'll probably touch that up get it looking a little better it hasn't even been cleaned um, but we'll see what we come up with even if we have to leave it with that wear in the center it'll be a lot better than the one we got believe me <laughs> I know you're dying to see it but uh, out of respect for uh, humanity I won't show you what it looks like 
So there you go. That is our starting point and our play field that we're beginning with. And this is sitting in our showroom. We'll let people come in and ooh and ah over it as we work through it. It'll probably take us several weeks to... We won't work on it straight through. We'll, we'll do a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there until we actually uh, uh, get a nice, decent machine up and running again. But uh, we'll, we'll film little updates and let you see along the way just so you can see uh, kind of how it's coming along. And everybody root for it because this thing is going to need a lot of help. All right, we will see you soon on the next video. All right, folks, we're back. Next thing we're going to do on this Lost World is we need to replace the power supply. So uh, we were able to find a used one. You can't get new ones. Um, they make new rectifier boards, but they don't make new transformers. These transformers output several different voltages. Um, and the rectifier board rectifies all that with the three bridge rectifiers. Um, so we've been working on this power supply. We bought this used. Uh, the main thing that you need to do on these is the connectors usually need to be replaced. Um, so we put all new connectors in. You need to make sure that the fuse holders are in good shape. And they are, and the fuses, of course, are good. Um, the two sand resistors sometimes will burn up. On this particular parts uh, part, both of these were missing, so we put new ones on. This one's a little bigger than they usually are, so usually a little smaller. But as long as it's the same value or slightly more, you're fine. Um, so we've got uh, it in. Now the three bridge rectifiers are right here, right here, and right here. A lot of times you replace those too. These ones are still working good, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, you can replace those by putting bigger ones on the top. Um, but these are fine, so we're going to leave it for now. We usually don't have too many, too much trouble out of that. But um, so there it is, nice little rebuilt uh, power supply for it. So we'll we'll throw it in the machine, and uh, uh, then we'll work on some connectors. All right, folks. So we got the power supply mounted in there, and I put a brand new connector on that first connector, which is the one that inputs all the uh, power from the wall, blah 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 blah, into the rectifier board which in turn sends it down to the transformer and then the rectifier rectifies it. Once you get that done, you need to check all of the test points. So we've got five of them here, so I'm going to check them slowly. I've got this ground probe precariously placed in there. Basically, you want to check it on the bottom leg of this resistor. This is where you get your ground. So we're going to test test point one. We're getting six volts DC. Uh, that's for your switched uh, volt. Uh, lights which is like the uh, play field lamps and stuff that turn on and off and then the second one here test point two we've got 185 volts that's the that's dangerous but <laughs> that's the uh, voltage that ultimately goes to the score displays whenever you don't have any of the other connectors plugged in you're going to get a low number like that like 180 170 something like that it actually turns into 220 once you plug in the a regulator board and when you check all these they don't need to be exact because they're not regulated yet because they haven't gone to the regulator board so uh, if they're irregular slightly that's no big deal so test point three 13 volts that 13 volts uh, is going to get turned into 5 volts on the regulator board which is going to uh, uh, make all of the other boards work and then we'll skip the fifth one for a second the fifth test point 46.4 volts DC, that's your solenoids, stuff like the flippers and uh, pop bumpers, stuff like that. And then test point four, the reason we skip that is because it's actually AC voltage. And so test point four is 7.5 volts AC. That's what actually makes all of the, uh, it runs straight to the play field to make all the play field lights work and all of the back box lights work, um, the ones that are general illumination. So we've got that in and we've got the uh, first connector repinned. Now next I'm going to have to figure out what to do with this connector to make it actually fit where it's supposed to go down here because that's how we're going to get power up to the regulator board and over to the MPU board. So I think all the wires are a little short. So I'm going to be pinching and pulling a bunch of wires. So we'll see how that works out. But I'll be back after we figure that out. All right, folks, so we're back. Now what I did, we spent about two hours on this. Uh, again, this machine's probably not even worth all this time, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, I replaced that bottom connector. Remember, it was completely missing. We took this junk off of there. I don't even know what they were doing with that. But basically, that was the, the back box connector, and then they had that rigged in, too. Got rid of that stuff, and we put it back the way it was. The problem we had was that the wires were too short. 
they all were hacked up here. So we put in these two nice um, um, mate and lock connectors here that ex and then had plenty of new wire uh, and we tried to keep it as color coded as possible to the original and ran it down. So basically what that's doing is now the power supply is getting the power from the uh, the wall and it's rectifying all the voltages and then it's sending it out up into the back box. Now if you remember we have uh, a uh, wire here and then they cut this one. So those wires are now live. I'm going to have to uh, put a new connector on that too, but it's a lot less wires, so it won't be as big of a deal. And then the wires run across. They've all got power now, and they're running over here to the MPU and down here to the lamp board. Now, here's the cool part. <laughs> there will also be one more connector that I need to plug in there that'll come off the play field once we get it done. So here's the cool part. You hit the power switch and you get your first sign of life out of this old game that's been sitting forever. So does this game want to cooperate? Does it want to come back to life? That one light bulb says yes. So this game, half, most of the light bulbs are missing. Uh, the ones inside the little uh, boxes there that go behind the back glass, those are a switched bulbs. So without the CPU, that won't work. But now that we've got the uh, now that we've got the general illumination wired up, one of the general illumination bulbs actually still works. So, <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Turned off, hit the switch on the game. That one light comes on trying to tell you, please save me, I'm still in here. I want to be a lost world again. So, uh, we will do what we can do. So, we're working right through it. Now we've got the power supply ready to go. Everything's cool with that. So, the next step... Um, really that was one of the biggest problems was that connector being all hacked up. The next step is replacing that little connector and then getting our uh, voltage regulator board in there. So we will do that tomorrow and we'll film it for you after it's done and uh, add it into the video. We'll see you then. Alright folks we're back. So last time we had messed with the power supply and got it all putting out the right voltages and then we were talking about how it needed a voltage regulator board. So I had one that was a parts board. Well, not parts board, but untested. Um, we broke it out. That little connector that was cut, I was able to make an all-new connector um, because I was able to unravel the uh, wire harness a little bit and pull out enough um, extra so that I could, it could, everything could fit. So the solenoid board, um, I replaced the voltage regulator. So now the rectifier board is sending 12 volts up and uh, this rectify this uh, voltage regulator here is turning it into five volts, which is you know five volts is what basically most PCBs need to run, um, the IC chips and stuff. Uh, while I had the solenoid board out, I checked all of these uh, TIP 102 transistors down here, which all make all of the solenoids work, and uh, replaced a couple of them, so they're all good. I replaced the five volt capacitor there. All of the uh, stuff in the um, this section here creates the voltage for the uh, score displays. It was all working and tested fine, but the voltage was really low. It was only putting out like 130 volts. Um, so uh, I figured out that the uh, pot there that adjusts it was broke, so I replaced it. And then also this cap at the top uh, filters it, and it was really screwed up making the voltage so low. So once I replaced that and replaced that pot, I got it to where I could adjust it up to about 175 volts where it needs to be. Um, and then I plug this in because this has the return for the cabinet uh, switch, uh, the test switch, because I'm trying to get this to where I can test displays and things like that in it. So we got all that ready and all those voltages are right. So then what it does is it sends the voltage over this way to the MPU board. So I had an MPU board that um, I already had working and popped it in, plugged it in, had a good connector already there. That's the connector for the displays. Um, this is the connector for the uh, cabinet switches right there. Uh, so we plugged all that in. And then we had a light board, so we plugged it in. We've got a couple wires over here that we haven't completely connected yet, so this isn't, the lights aren't up and working yet, but uh, we basically now have the whole powertrain working and the MPU board in it. So then, we went through our stash and found 
a bunch of displays. And so we got out some displays that we had tested previously and uh, uh, seemed to work pretty good, or we had it labeled as working, and uh, replaced a few resistors and stuff. I also replaced the light bulbs that were missing or burnt out. I left the one over here, that dusty one, since it made the trip so long. You know, I left that one in that we were looking at it a few minutes ago. So we'll turn it on and see what it does. Oop, if I can reach the switch. All right, so we'll see if she boots up. All right, it's up and running. Now, it doesn't have uh, the soundboard plugged in yet. I don't have a soundboard for it yet, uh, but we'll get one of those and work on it, get it back how it was. I've also got this one display down here. It's got a little bit of burn on it. If the voltage is too high in the machine that you've got the displays in, it'll burn them like that. Uh, to where a little bit of the display will be missing. So unfortunately that one's like that, so we put it in the fourth player um, just because it gets used less. And we might replace that with a with a little bit better one too. So we'll put it in test mode and go to the uh, to the display test. There we go. So got all good displays. Got the general illumination lights in the back box working. Got most of the boards in it. We still need to do the soundboard. And of course, the play field is just a bare piece of wood. There's nothing hooked up on it yet. But we are getting there. Progress, progress, progress. So uh, be back in just a second. Look at that. We were able to pick up a really nice back glass for it. Well, not really nice, but nice enough. Um, we've been saving this for a while because we knew we had this game in parts and storage. So. That's one of the reasons we want to fix it, because look how nice that back glass is. Man, that's a heck of a game. It just looks really cool. Look at the art on this thing. It's all intricate. With the dragon and the woman and the guy. And the horse. Check that out. So this is going to be a really cool game once we get it up and, and running. And we got, uh, you know, got a lot of it done. Got the power supply working, obviously. Got the game board up and running to where the game is actually uh, in a track mode right now. We just don't have the light board all the way hooked up that uh, turns on, like, the game over light and stuff like that. And we don't have the sound board hooked up. But it's getting there. So there you go. So that will end this video. Um, We'll, we'll do another video in the future showing you uh, us working on the play field and the cabinet a little bit. and uh, By then we'll have a little bit more of the uh, electronics figured out in the back box, like the, uh, the sound board and the, we'll get the lamp board up and running. Um, but by the time we get ready to work on a play field, we'll shoot a video for you. So if you like videos like this, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Or you can, uh, if you're looking for a, a game, check out our website, lionsarcade.com. And it shows you all of the games we have for sale right now. Um, we've got a showroom here in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 minutes south of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, full of arcade games and a few pinball machines for sale. Uh, but we keep a list of everything we've got with pictures and prices and everything on our website at all times. So go check it out no matter when you're seeing this video. And uh, if you're local, stop by and see us. You can check out the selection in person. Now, maybe you don't uh, want to buy a game, and maybe you're not uh, local where you can come check us out. Well, that's cool, too. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube, and uh, you'll get an email every time that we put up a new video. So we will see you on the next video.